I've worked at a portrait studio for three months now. Some weird shit is going on. Since this seems to be an area of expertise for you guys here at Reddit No Sleep, I wanted to see what the community thinks about it. I'm posting this on a throwaway account because I value my privacy and I don't want any of this coming back to the company I work for. All names have been changed for their protection. It began around Valentine's Day when a shadow started showing up in our photos. It looked like a diagonal bar across the top of the picture, and it only happened on our white background. It wasn't something super noticeable, just shaded enough to be annoying and require photoshopping out. I should mention that the portrait studio I work for is a chain, and our white background is the most popular. It's required to do for everyone as part of our shooting protocol. Protocol includes things like doing four to five backgrounds, a wide variety of poses on each, and most importantly, grabbing three shots of every pose just in case someone is blinking or kids are moving around. It can get kind of annoying, but there is some room for creativity. Anyway, the shadows seem to appear at random. I couldn't find a single reason for it. I tried cleaning the lens, the background vinyl, repositioning my subjects to avoid the area. Nothing helped. It wasn't a huge deal at first, something that could be solved with a few clicks in Photoshop. Then, a week or so later, I remember it clearly because it was a 60 degree day in February. We had our first little boy come in for Valentine's Day themed photos. We don't get many boys that time of year because usually parents think red hearts, flowers, equals girly. Two-year-old children are notoriously difficult to get pictures of in the first place, due to the running around and tantrums. Some young children are afraid of the studio. It reminds them of a doctor's office because of the bright lights and us telling them to sit still. They think we're going to give them shots. That's why when this incident happened, I didn't think too much of it at first. I got through two backgrounds with this kid. Let's call him Michael, without a hitch. He was amazing, astounding actually. He was a unicorn of two-year-olds. Michael understood all my directions, did everything I said, wasn't clingy to his mom, and was super easy to make smile. He was so great I even lifted him up and let him push the button to bring down the white background. Kids love pushing buttons. I had him sit on the floor crisscross applesauce started to take my usual three snaps of the pose. Except while I was shooting, out of nowhere he started crying and cowered down on the floor. He was rocking back and forth, holding his head, blubbering something I couldn't really make out. I caught a few words that sounded like falling and head hurts. His mother picked him up and tried to calm him down, but he kept crying. I explained the whole doctor's office thing, rolled the white vinyl up, and immediately Michael calmed down. I've never seen a child go from 0 to 100, then back down to 0, so quickly. I was able to finish the session on a different backdrop. His mom and I sat down at a viewing computer, and little Michael went to go play at the Lego table. We engaged in small talk while the photos loaded, and I complimented her on how well behaved Michael was during our shoot, and I apologized for scaring him. I know it wasn't my fault, but parents appreciate it. The pictures finished loading. They come up in sets of three in the software, and parents choose their favorite. We eventually get to the pictures I took on the white background. First shot, he looked happy and had a great cheesy smile on his face. The shadow of course was there, but I had grown used to it. Second shot, this one sent chills through me. Michael is looking up with a horrified face, but the strangest thing was the shadow had moved down the photo, as if it was falling on top of him and he could see it. Third shot. He was laying on the floor, and the shadow was on top of him, like a beam or something had collapsed. I'd love to show you guys, but the company's copyright and privacy policy wouldn't allow that. Mom gets done selecting her pictures, goes through a round of elimination to select the one she wants printed. She ends up insisting on getting the first white background shot, which surprised me. I mean, it was a good picture, but there was nothing special about it, and I had gotten better ones. She even ended up getting the most prints of it. She, of course, inquired about the shadow, and I assured her that I would Photoshop it out. We finished up the viewing without any problems. 
she purchased a photo album that would be made elsewhere and get sent to us later for pickup. They went to go have lunch. I sat down and got to work touching up the pictures. I erased the shadow in the pictures as usual and sent everything to the printer. When I went to package the prints, I paused when seeing his picture on the white. The bar was still there. I went back to check the file that was sent to the printer. No, there was nothing on the file. Huh. I sent the file through the photo printer again. The bar-like shadow wouldn't go away. Perplexed, I did some re-cropping to the photo, so that part of the shadow was only in a small corner of the print. A frame would probably cover it up. Things proceeded as usual for the next couple weeks. I tried to ask my manager about the shadow, see if there was anything we could do about it, and if she'd ever had that problem before. I basically got the brush off. Just try working around it. There's nothing we can do about it. Blah, blah, blah. Tiffany, the manager, likes to ignore issues, pretend they aren't happening, till absolutely necessary. She's been here for four years, which is surprising because this studio has an extremely high turnover rate. There's a drawer full of about 40 old name tags in the back. Nora, my other co-worker, has been here almost a year. She said that she's seen six people come and go in that time. I mean, it's not a job just anyone can do. It's creative, yet also quite physical, with a sales aspect, and holidays are extremely stressful. But, that's still a lot of people to go through. Anyway, just thought it was odd how positive Tiffany seemed. There was nothing we could do about that shadow. The photo book from Michael's session arrived at the studio and sat here for two weeks. I called to give his mom another reminder to come pick it up. Hi, this is Courtney calling from the photo studio. I'm just calling to remind you about your photo album. Oh my gosh. Long pause. She sounded exhausted. I also thought I heard a faint beeping in the background. I'm so sorry. I completely forgot about that. I'll send my husband to get it right away. Michael's dad arrived about an hour later. He looked as if he hadn't slept in a week. I retrieved the book from the back and handed it to him. He stared at the cover of the album for a bit. Michael's cheerful, rosy-cheeked face smiled back. Out of nowhere, he started tearing up. Feeling a little awkward, I pulled out a tissue and gave it to him. Um, is everything okay? I asked, dreading the answer. Um, everything... Oh, yeah, yeah, he assured, composing himself. He accepted the tissue. My wife will be really glad to look through this, after everything that's happened. I stood there uncomfortably shifting from foot to foot. I didn't press for information, as I try not to invade clients' privacy too much. Despite that, the words desperately tumbled out of him, as if he didn't say it now, he never would. My son was playing at the park a few weeks ago, when we had that really nice weather. He begged me to let him try the monkey bars for the first time, so I gave in. I was beside him the whole time. I looked away just for a second. He got choked up again. I didn't catch him in time. The bars still had some ice on them. I know it's still winter, but it's been so warm lately. I thought it would be fine. He got a bad head injury, fell into a coma. The doctors can't tell me when he'll wake up. At this point, my hand was clamped to my mouth and I was crying too. Such a tragedy to befall a nice family so quickly. I made a gesture towards him that asked, is it okay if I hug you? He gave me a side hug. Everything will be fine, I assured. God, I hope so. He started towards the door. Looking back at me, he said, Thanks. I saw another set of customers about to walk into the studio, so I ran to the back room to collect myself. Let Nora deal with the next people. I heard the sounds of playing in the studio and Nora making funny noises. I snuck out real quick to punch out for lunch get my sandwich and hid myself in the back again. The back room shares a wall with the camera room, so I can hear most of what goes on. Mostly giggles and the popping sound of the lights. Abruptly a scream sounds, then a slew of, what's, what's wrong? And oh, it's okay honey, everything's fine. I'm still clocked out for lunch, so I can't go and help. Nora's awesome with kids and I figured she could handle it. After I get back from lunch, Nora's clients are gone, and she's got a picture up in Photoshop. Hey Courtney, can
Can you come here for a second? Nora gestures me over. Yeah, what's up? Well, I photoshopped that shadow out as usual, but for some reason the print that came out still has it. The family really liked this picture, and it's the only one I was able to get on the white, so it's important. My blood runs cold. What? The same thing happened to her? Did you have a young boy in your session, about two years old? Yeah, why? Nothing, just curious. But she could see I looked a little freaked out, and I'm sure my face still had some signs of crying. She started pressing me for answers, so I filled her in on my similar experience. Nora looked confused. I'm sure it's just a coincidence. That poor family, though. I told her what I did with my photo. We just had to crop it in more. Now, after all these events, none of this is what spurred me to write this post to Reddit. This last series of events is what really sent me over the edge. Yesterday, Nora's client came in to pick up a canvas they ordered. While she went in the back to get it, I pretended to make small talk with the mom, but I was really fishing for information. So how's the little one? I said cheerily. Oh, he's good. His birthday party is today. I deflated with relief. Thank God he's all right. It was really just all in my head. I continue to chit-chat with the mom when Nora comes back with the canvas in hand. The mom thanks us and heads to the door. But before she reaches it, her phone rings. It's gone cold again outside, so she stayed inside to talk. Her happy expression turned to one of worry. He hit his head? She asked. I hear muffled tones from her phone. Her face darkens. Oh my god. Oh no. A, c a coma? She rushes out the door, but we catch the last bit of her conversation. I'm coming to the hospital right now. Nora and I slowly turn to look at each other. I'm certain the alarmed look on her face matched the one I felt on my own. Now it seems these events can't be a coincidence. I really don't understand what's going on here, and maybe I'm just blowing everything out of proportion. Let me hear your theories and I'll update you guys in a few days with any developments. Number two. So, I just moved into my very own place. It was such a euphoric feeling to be able to walk in there, drop my stuff down and do whatever I wanted. True freedom. I always had a lot of rules at my parents' house. Can't be up past a certain time. I couldn't smoke inside. The TV couldn't be too loud. Same with my music. It sucked. First thing I did was sit back on the couch, light up a joint and started to play my guitar. I was on my level, completely relaxed without a care in the world, and for the first time in a long time, truly happy. Of course, after a toke session, I had a mean case of the munchies that had to be dealt with when the weirdest thing happens. I live on the third floor. There's no one else above me. I went into the cabinets to look for the Doritos I had bought for this occasion when a tapping noise came from the ceiling. I know what you're all thinking. I'm stoned out of my mind and I'm hearing things. Well, that's what I thought at first too, but it just only got worse. So, like I said, I was pretty blitzed. So I ignored it and went back to the couch and turned on the TV. I turned on Fearnet and devoured my chips for the next few hours. Deciding it was kind of late, I decided to hit the sack. Soon as I got in bed, the noise started up again. Except this time, it sounded like footsteps. But again, I tried pushing it out of my mind. I had just had a horror movie watching spree with Mary Jane as my date, and I decided it was my mind trying to scare me, and eventually I passed out. When I woke up, I found my guitar wasn't in its stand where I'd left it, and the TV was on. This is impossible. I love the guitar like it's my child and always make sure it's away whenever I'm done to ensure it's safety. But even more unsettling was my TV was on channel 6, and every clock in my apartment had stopped at 6. This freaked me the hell out, but trying to be rational, I told myself I must have lost power, and the clocks got stuck, and that was all. The rest of my day was normal. I just hung out, played more guitar, and went to sleep without a problem. When I woke up, my entire living room was trashed, my couch tipped over, same with the table and chairs. My TV was on the floor, and worst of all, my guitar was gone. Just like the day before, all my clocks were stuck on 6 o'clock. I decided to call the manager of the complex to check the cameras in my hallway, 
see if anyone was breaking in, and to my surprise there was not a soul in sight, all night. At this point I decided to buy a camera, and set it up in my living room, to see what was going on, and to try to catch the bastard that was doing this. After cleaning up my apartment and squaring everything away, I went to bed again with no issues. As soon as I woke up, I pulled my laptop into my bed, checked the camera which sent the recording to my email, so I open it up and start to watch. Nothing. I fast forward and surprise, surprise, at six, the camera started flickering when it appeared. A shrouded figure appears in the center of the room, with my guitar in one hand and a corpse in the other. It dropped the body in the center of the floor, stood over it, and started playing the creepiest shit I've ever heard when the body just exploded under its feet and blood painted every wall in the room. The camera went black for a second, and when it came back, the being was inches from the camera, shaking its head at me. Then, nothing. I ran into my living room. There was nothing in there at all except my guitar, back in its holder, with dried blood on its strings. I ran right to my parents' house a few blocks away and didn't look back. I don't know what to do. Please help. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please leave a like, comment, share, and subscribe if you haven't already. I know subscribing doesn't seem like it helps a lot or really means anything to you, but to me, it really helps grow my channel, really helps me reach a wider variety of audience, and just more people in general can enjoy our videos. Till we meet in the next video, stay sinful.